What is up guys, Awesome Nerd Show here. So we just got back from seeing the new Bumblebee movie. And so this is going to be our review and we will be talking about spoilers. So if you don't want to know anything about the movie, go ahead and shut the video off. But we are, will be talking about spoilers probably throughout the whole thing. Um, so let's go ahead and start it off again as usual. Is the movie good or not? Uh, for me personally, I would say yes. This is definitely a good a movie overall in general and definitely out for Transformers a good movie. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to compare it. Um, because for me personally, I did like like at least the first three uh, older Transformer movies. I mean, I know their whole like story and stuff and back thing that people always say, you know, of Michael Bay and all that stuff. But um, there's Explosion. definitely yeah explosions and everything. But there's definitely a lot of stuff in this movie I enjoyed a lot more. So I'd have to say by that I like it. But I think. Um, action wise the other ones are better but there's a reason for that and we'll talk about that um so it's hard again hard to compare them but i definitely would probably say um just by thinking about what i do like and stuff this is a better transformers movie overall um and we'll do a rating first then go into it and stuff but uh, before i get into that i assumed you enjoyed it yeah i really enjoyed it i feel the story was a lot better in this one than yeah. the other movies uh especially with the new director yeah. And Steven Spielberg as the executive yeah, producer. Pro probably helped out on that and stuff. Um, so and I then I did like that they gave the Transformers a more cartoon comic Well, we're going to get look. into that and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, I so say just so for his uh, bro's backstory, he is a huge Transformers fan, grew up with Transformers and all that stuff. I have learned about Transformers from him and the newer series and stuff. Um, so I don't know nearly as much, but I enjoyed it back when I was younger and stuff, um, but he still enjoys stuff. So if if you had any doubts, he's going to love it pretty much. Um, so getting to a rating, I would probably have to go with a 7 on my skill. Again, 5 directly in the middle. Anything above 5 is good. I would go with a 7 because obviously it's not the best movie ever, but there is a lot to like about it. It's just, it's just not as action-packed as I'd want it, but again, we'll get into reasons why I believe that's the case. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say 7. Um, I still, again, compared to what we've seen previously, I did like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Spider more, but I think this was about on par. If I didn't like it a little bit better, I don't remember I rating already than Aquaman. You um, gave it a six, okay. fool. Then yeah, so I did like it a little bit more than Aquaman probably. I did enjoy Aquaman. It had a lot better action, but just the story was lackluster. Where this had more story and less action to it. Um, so what was your score? I'd say it was a eight and a half, nine yeah, eight. yet again. Again, not surprising because of love for this and stuff. Um, so let's get into it. So yeah, the biggest thing, the change, the thing that I love the most about this was as he mentioned, the look of the characters, they look so much like, I mean, obviously they're not a perfect match of their originals because um, they can't obviously get all the same shapes to fit up, fit together and everything, but they look so much more like their original cartoon counterparts than they did in the older Transformers movies. So when you saw a character, you knew who it was. You didn't have to question. Obviously, with some of the characters like Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, like in the older ones, you could tell because their color schemes and everything. But with this, like when you see it, you could automatically tell who they are. And so as the movie opened with the fighting on Cybertron, which I don't think we really even got any of that sort of stuff in the older movies, at least not until the later ones. We saw some of Cybertron, but not any of the stuff that you kind of saw in the old cartoon and everything. So we see the war on Cybertron between the Decepticons and the Autobots. And so you get to see from there all different sorts of characters and um I won't run through them, I don't know if you want to. Um, but we got, of course, all a bunch of popular ones. And when you saw them, they looked exactly, almost exactly what they did on the cartoon, just brought into li live action, even though they're CG. But they look so much like their original ones. Did you want to talk I was, about them? I was going to say, some of the uh, Autobots that you saw right away were Ratchet, RC, and uh, Wheeljack. Yeah, and then of course Bumblebee. And, and then Optimus. just in a quick shot of another Autobot yelling, you got to see Brawn. Yeah, and then um, for Decepticons, no Megatron. I was surprised that we didn't see any Megatron at all. I thought he would have been there um, on Cybertron at some, just like a real quick thing. But no Megatron, but we did see Starscream, Soundwave, uh, Shockwave. Shockwave, Thundercracker, and yeah, uh, Skywarp just in passing, Yeah, along with Starscream. And then, of course, there's all sorts of different characters, but of course, you don't didn't focus enough on each of them. But all sorts of auto, uh, whatever you Did you say Ravage? 
No, we did see Ravage do, of course, pop out of Soundwave, right? Yeah. Soundwave, yeah. He popped out of Soundwave and looked pretty, like, in the I trailer. I was so much happier with that Ravage than the one yeah, that was well, in the Michael Bay. Everything looks better in this. But, it, like, from the trailer to me, it's still like you could tell who it was because it looked like a dog, cat type thing, whatever Ravage is supposed to be. But, it, that like, you could see that. But to me, it looked the least like it did. But seeing it in the movie, it did look better because it had the, like, jets on its hind legs and stuff like it does and everything. So it looked really good. So that was awesome to see that. But, like, the biggest standout, like, you see all that. So, you know, obviously, like, if you notice some of the original Transformers, you see it but then the biggest like thing that like the moment that I was like yes this is exactly what I want you see so the two Decepticons that are in this movie that are hunting down Bumblebee and stuff trying because obviously the Autobots are getting beat on Cybertron it's being taken over by Decepticons they uh, Optimus sends them out all over the galaxy trying to find better places and he ends up sending Bumblebee to Earth and says you know if the Decepticons find you they can't like know about earth or anything or um all the autobots will be finished and stuff and so you get um bumblebee sent off to earth and everything so they send out stuff to find him he originally lands on earth in i forget what year it was 1987 well i thought that's when the movie was set so it's either set in the exact same year and it's just a short he, time he i crashed thought it, on earth in 87 okay so yeah i know the rest of the movie was in 87 so i thought there was like at least a year or two gap but apparently not um, so he crashes, and you, that's where you get uh, run across John Cena's group of... I don't know if they were the Sector 7 at that point. They were. Okay. And then he, he uh, Bumblebee crashed there, and he looks like a Jeep, I assume, because they have, like, Hummers and stuff around that. That's what he takes the shape of, because this is right as he crashes Yeah, he did Earth. look at a Jeep <clears throat> wheelie that okay. was on the base there. And so that's why he transformed into, like, a Jeep-looking thing. And then um, he... As he's running away, in comes a fighter jet, and it's Blitzwing, yes, I believe. Blitzwing. Yeah, Blitzwing. But he ends up getting taken out pretty early, and then the movie fast-forwards into where it's set with our main character and stuff of Charlie. Um, and then later on, two more Decepticons come in trying to find Bumblebee, and I forget what their names were. Shatter and Dropkick. Yeah, Shatter and Dropkick, we looked them up. So they turn into muscle cars as they crash onto Earth, and then they also... Uh, scan and, or whatever they do because they just kind of look at things don't to be forget able to about the moon though because they were on yes the moon. that's what i'm getting at okay um and so they uh also turn into one turns into a jet and one turns into a helicopter as well so they have two different versions of vehicles they can turn into but before they get to earth though they stop on what look like the moon at least and you see them start attacking someone and it's a red similar looking thing the uh, bumblebee and like as soon as i saw it, i was like it's cliff jumper and then as soon as they start like talking to it he's like has like this pulp like c3po protocol droid thing where he's like i am whatever i'm cliff jumper and he says his name so like that's what i was saying like as soon as you see it you were like that looks exactly like cliff jumper and it is cliff jumper that's what i like you don't have to worry or like try and figure out who these people are and base them on what you know from past transformers and stuff the cartoons like okay who's this person and you in the old ones but like i said besides optimus and uh bumblebee you'd have to sit there and wait till they say who they or they were before you knew who they were and so you could definitely tell who they were this time which is what i really enjoyed about the movie um did you want to say anything on that looks and stuff okay yeah so that's one thing i loved absolutely um so much about this movie was their looks and i'm glad that they did that um next thing i want to talk about was uh the characters um or I guess the character story, whatever. Um, so you get Charlie, which is the girl that ends up getting Bumblebee because she finds him in a junk shop where she's finding stuff to try and fix an old car. Of some I don't know. I don't know cars very well. Um, she's trying to find old pieces and stuff, but she ends up finding the Volkswagen Beetle of Bumblebee, um, which I do like that he was a Beetle and stuff because after the Jeep, he did turn into a Volkswagen um, after he got beat up by Blitzwing and stuff. Um, so she finds him and ends up, the guy that owns the place ends up letting her have it and everything. And so you get the story of connection of her because she's obviously brings home for the first time and finds out, um, after like looking at inspection and stuff that it turns into a transformer of Bumblebee. And so she, they end up, um, you know, cause he gets his vocal cords ripped out by Blitzwing. So that's why he can't talk and everything. And so he's trying to like, you know, He's, like, cowering and stuff, scared of her. And so they just make this relationship bond that expands throughout the movie. And it gives you, like, you know, even though Bumblebee is this robot, you know, uh, well, I would say non-sentient, but obviously he can think and 
was able to talk and everything. Um, but you can see the feelings they have between each other. Of course, she lost her dad. Um, I assume pretty soon before that, maybe a year may at most or something. It was relatively soon. I think they said six months maybe or something. Um, but So she's missing her dad, and so Bumblebee's now coming in and kind of fills in that thing, that emptiness or whatever of her, and becomes like her friend and her you know closest companion or whatever. And so you get a lot of emotion between those two characters. And again, that fills in the whole story of, you know, um, of their relationship together and she trying to keep him hidden and then still trying to I guess I would say like enjoy life or whatever with him now in her life because he makes her happier and everything and you get introduced to like a fr uh, this other kid that turns out to like like her and stuff and wants to be like her boyfriend and st everything and he was a fun character you don't see much of him though but he's thrown in there and stuff but um, I like when he does get thrown in you see more expansion of her like emotions and stuff besides just hating like her family as she did earlier in the movie but of course after the reveal of Bumblebee and that he's an alien and it's in it's on their world and stuff they switch over and they get along a lot better um, and they actually end up helping Bumblebee at the end of the movie and stuff so I really enjoyed that whole like characters instead of like in the um, original ones you had Shia LaBeouf and then he had the stuff for Bumblebee but everybody else um, was like terrified of him and he's an alien until at the very end where they all saved Earth and then everyone starts to accept him more. Some other things I just want to mention so there was a lot of connections into the um, uh, Michael Bay movies so um, at the very end we do get Bumblebee transforming into an old version Camaro I don't know what kind of Camaro but how he appeared in the first Transformers movie before he turned into the newer Camaro um, so he did turn into that which I was disappointed because I just wanted him to be the Volkswagen forever since that's kind of his form in the Transformer movies or the cartoon so I wanted him to stick with that but again he transformed so you do get that so kind of I guess leads into um, what the Michael Bay ones did but there was disconnects though because you had um, at the very end of the movie you had uh, Optimus showing up which I it was cool to see him because you see him first as a semi looks almost exactly like his cartoon semi and then um, after you get like a credit or something at the very end that goes into another scene and you actually see Optimus himself and again looks very similar to his cartoon version so that's cool to see and then you see um, other uh, uh, Autobots coming down to Earth. You don't see who they are. You just see they're like meteor things coming down to Earth. So they are coming, um, more coming into Earth where with the Michael Bay, they didn't appear until, you know, obviously after Sh the Shia Buff character got Bumblebee and all that sort of stuff. So they are already here on Earth because this was back in the 80s, you know, prior to in the 2000s and stuff. So that's kind of a little bit messed up, but I don't know. Um, we do have Sector 7, which of course is the group that, um, is like fighting the Transformers, the human group in the first movie and then starts working with the uh, um, Autobots and stuff in the later movies. Um, and then from there, there was uh, Agent Simmons, yes. I think, which is one of the agent head agent guy in the first Transformers movies. And it, it was played by John Turturro. Okay, I couldn't remember his name. And so, yeah, he's through then through all the Transformers movies um, as helping the Autobots and stuff. Um, so you do get him in a younger version, which, again, you know, you don't really get introduced to Transformers until later on in the Michael Bay ones. But, again, they're introducing him earlier in here. So that's a, just another connection going on on here um, I don't really know of any other movie connections oh, you do see how Bumblebee because obviously in the um, Michael Bay ones he when he talks he uses um, the radio inside his car or whatever to talk and so you see him getting that because his vocal cords damage and he's trying to use the radio and the girl ends up switching it out for a newer version of a radio and stuff and so he's able to then use it and be able to start doing learn how to use his communication and stuff through radio um, but I think that was probably about it for that. Uh, the last thing, uh, visually, we'll say, because obviously with Michael Bay, it was all like explosions and CG and all this sort of stuff. Obviously a lot of CG because they can't make really Transformers and stuff. Um, but I feel they fit in pretty well, especially like in the, you see the part in the trailer where Bumblebee's like rubbing the girl's head after they do stuff and he's like rubbing her head. It looks, you know, relatively like a thing was actually touching her head, even though it obviously wasn't. Um, so they did pretty good on that. Explosion-wise, that's the thing. 
there weren't as many explosions. There were some, but to me, they made sense when there were explosions. Like, it was something blowing up, and so it would be an explosion. But it wasn't just every little thing was exploding. Like, you know, a piece of paper wasn't just doing an explosion. It, was, it seemed to me stuff that made sense. And so I did enjoy that. And then the last part I want to touch on, uh, for it was just for me personally, was the music. I absolutely love the music in this movie because it's set in the 80s, so it plays a lot, a lot of 80s music, which I'm a huge 80s music fan, so I knew like every single song they played, which I thought was fantastic and everything. And I did want to touch on, since I'm actually wearing the shirt, though, you know, you've got the touch. They played that song in the movie, Bumblebee played it on the radio, which was um, so much fun to hear because I was hoping, I was like, I hope they play that song just because of how iconic it is from Transformers the movie, which is such a good Transformers movie um, that I'm glad they threw that in there. And I was so, when I started here, when I heard that start playing, I got so excited. So yeah, the music, if you like 80s music, was absolutely amazing. And I think they made really good choices and everything. And of course, you gotta see like uh, Bumblebee was watching The Breakfast Club and everything. So it was fun, a lot of fun 80s stuff going on um, in this movie and stuff. Um, so is there anything else you wanted to touch on? No. Um, so yeah, at the very end, I kind of mentioned it there. So Bumblebee, um, just, uh, the two Decepticons, uh, Shatter and Dropkick, I think were their names, are trying to send out a transmission back to Cybertron to the Decepticons that have taken over, obviously, that, um, you know, Bumblebee and the Autobots are going to be here on Earth, so come to Earth, you know, we'll fight them and destroy them and everything. Um, and so they're trying to send the signal out through our satellites and a radio tower and stuff. And so um, Bumblebee's able to stop Dropkick and beat him up. And then the girl, Charlie, is able to disconnect the uh, whatever communication device that's sending the message. She connect, disconnects it and then Bumblebee ends up beating up and uh, just, uh, killing uh, Shatter. And so he ends up obviously saving the day in that way. And so then it's when they you know set off and go do this whole thing in San Francisco right by the Golden Gate Bridge where Bumblebee sees on the uh, uh, Golden Gate Bridge an old Camaro that he then transforms into, and then he leaves, and then that's when you see him and Optimus driving down the Golden Gate Bridge. And then, like I said, it goes into credits. It shows, like, a couple credits, maybe the main credits or something. It's very short. And then it goes into another little scene where it, they're in a woods, and it's Bumblebee and Optimus um, saying, like, you saved Earth or stuff and um, all this. And then they look up to the sky, and there's, like, at least five, if not more, um, again, the meteor things coming down to Earth, showing more this, uh, Autobots coming into Earth. And so I can't wait to see another one because I assume by that they're going to be making another one. And as good as this one was compared to the past Transformers movies, I feel this definitely deserves more. And again, I hope they keep a lot of the same uh, looks and stuff from the original cartoon. Um, so if they do that, I want to see more. And hopefully they can build in more storylines and maybe incorporate some of the original cartoon stories into um, the movies and everything. Um, but did you have anything you want to add on? To thing. So it's definitely a good movie, a good Transformers movie. Like I said, I'd probably say because of the whole, like I said, the looks of the um, uh, Transformers and stuff, I love that so much. I think this is going to make it the best Transformers movie to me. Like I said, it was a little bit of lack lackluster of action, but I think that's because this was just focused on Bumblebee and he was the only good Autobot here on Earth where the others haven't arrived yet where in the first movie it was Bumblebee and then others came in and then they fought a bunch of Decepticons where this was just Bumblebee against these two Decepticons and so they don't clash until the very end so that's uh, made it not as action-packed but still fed the story really well. Um, and I feel like throughout the story, stuff built on top of each other. Like, it shows you stuff, and then it comes back later in the movie, the stuff you learned already. So it's just a nice, um, it's like, strung long film where everything fits, and they did a really good job of it. So I think that's going to be it for our review. So if you saw the movie, let us know what your opinion was in the comments. Let me know if you liked the look of the Transformers or not. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video, and of course, come back to see more movie reviews, and we'll see you next time.